Let us walk becomingly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in debauchery and wantonness, not in strife and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. As I mentioned, this is the first day of the new liturgical year. And we hear St. Paul and a witch hiding us in the epistle. And he says, Now is the hour for us to rise from sleep. And the idea is that it is to begin something new. It is a new start. And there is something of a new work for this beginning of the new, of the new liturgical year. And that work is our soul being prepared for the coming Savior, our soul being made ready to welcome the Savior at his birth. If we look at the secular sphere right now, there is no time of preparation. Christmas decorations are already up and running before Thanksgiving sometimes well before Thanksgiving. And the whole season of Advent is passed over. It's as if our Lord is already here. Christmas has already happened. But this time of Advent that the church has instituted does carry with it something of a spirit of penance. Now, be sure, it is not the same intensity, if you want, of penance like Lent would be. This penance is the clearing of the path. It is the clearing of the path for the one making his way to our souls. Echoing St. John the Baptist. And it is a time of silence. It's a time where we should be withdrawing from the exterior noise insofar as we can. It's not always absolutely possible in every state of life to do that. But in things that we don't necessarily have to be involved with, in the news, in music, in entertainment, we should have a certain withdrawal of ourselves from those things in this time especially. But we should also be attentive to withdrawing from interior noise. Something of a silencing of the soul. And what do I mean by that? I mean it's a time to give a special emphasis, a special push to the idea that we should stop thinking so much about ourselves. Stop focusing so much on ourselves and focus rather on our Lord who's coming. Advent is the season of hope. And hope in itself is an expectation, a justified expectation of a good that's not yet there. It's to be attained. We don't hope for something we already have. And this hope, it's a, des it's a desire for a Savior who can cure us, meaning He's capable of doing it, and at the same time who wants to do that, who wants to cure us. And that's why St. Paul says, now is the hour. Not tomorrow, not next week, not Christmas Eve, but now, this first day of Advent, of this season, now is the time to focus on Him who is wanting to come and cure us. And there are, as I've mentioned to you before, special graces, particular graces, for each season of the liturgical year. There are graces that will happen in this time of Advent that you won't get at other times of the year. So we must make an effort to capitalize, to profit as much as we can 
from what is made available to us at the time. And as I said, this time of Advent is one of silencing not only exterior things, but more importantly, interior things within our own soul. We can say that Advent is not so much about what we do, but about what we have done to us. It's about what we receive from God. It's about the formation that God himself wants to give, that only he can give in this time. And we see this idea expressed in three figures, three individuals at the beginning of this liturgical year. In the first Vespers of this Sunday from yesterday, we have the prophet Isaiah from the Old Testament. The first antiphon, the first thing that is put forth after the big office is begun, he says, In that day the mountains shall drop down sweetness, and the hills shall flow with milk and honey. So we see already this prophet in the Old Testament foreseeing all the way to the time of our Lord's coming, seeing through all that happens between himself and our Lord's birth, and he's foreseeing this coming of our Lord. And because he's a prophet, it means God himself is speaking through this man. And what does he say? He speaks about this coming of our Lord. He compares this coming of our Lord as a sweetness, a delight for the soul. This sweetness, this imagery of milk and honey, for us it's a bit lost. The imagery is lost because we live in a commercialized age. But for the time, certainly in the Old Testament, the idea of having an abundance of milk and honey, it was something of a dream come true. So this imagery, it's about the bounty of, the excessive bounty of our Lord's mercy. And it's flowing like these substances of milk and honey, just pouring out. And how it's so desirable, how the soul is so desirable of those things. And with this idea of this mercy of our Lord in mind, we go to the second figure, Again, taken from the office. This voice crying out in the wilderness. And that's St. John the Baptist at the office of Lords this morning. Make straight, make ready the paths of the Lord. The Lamb is coming. Follow Him. That's St. John the Baptist talking to me and to you. It means get rid of what is an obstacle to the coming Savior. Get rid of what is somehow impeding your going towards Him. Move it out of the way. Even if it's not something physical that you move, again, we go back to that idea of silencing the interior, silencing our soul. Something that we fabricate of ourselves. To move that aside so that there is a clear path from our soul to the coming Christ and Him to us. St. John the Baptist is the greatest among the prophets, and in fact, he's the last one. He's the last one of the prophets of the Old Testament. And he says, his idea that he expresses through these words from the liturgy, from Scripture, let us make penance, prepare your soul, for Christmas. And how to do that? How is it that we're going to clear these paths? How are we going to make ready these roads? Well, first and foremost, humbling yourself. Because Advent, and even more so Christmas, is not about you, but about God. It's about our Lord's birth. Granted, He comes for you. He comes 
with you in mind, that's true. But to stop thinking about ourselves, to stop focusing on ourselves, and to give that attention to God. So humbling oneself, and then the second, love one another. It's something in the way of these knocking down of walls, of leveling the hills. Those who have farm equipment can understand the importance of leveling things so that things flow as they should. That things drain as they should. And these walls that may be existing within our own soul. They can be walls of family. They can be walls of friends, of co-workers, of community members. But this is the time to level those things, to knock those walls down. It doesn't mean that they're going to reciprocate. It doesn't mean that those same groups of people I just described, are also going to knock down walls. They should, but it doesn't mean that they're going to. But that's not for you to answer. You do your part, which is to level, is to clear the road, because the Lamb is coming. And if He finds an obstacle there, if He finds something across the road, across the path, is that a risk you want to take? Is that a risk that you want to run that he might not come by. And the third figure that we have at the beginning of this season is that of Our Lady. We may can say a very contemplative point, how Our Lady is the incarnation of the spirit of Advent. What Advent is all about, Our Lady represents perfectly and what is that spirit it is this joyous and humble expectation of the divinely promised savior so it's not some pie in the sky well we wish we had something like that to come no it's divinely promised he is divinely promised and god doesn't lie and it's joyous because he comes, he is coming for you. But at the same time, it's humble because we recognize that he doesn't have to come. There was nothing, we may say, that obliged God to do what he did. That obliges him still to come spiritually. But yet, this same idea of this forgetfulness of self, of humbling ourselves, that is perfectly expressed in our, in our Lady's behavior in this time. As I said, she is the incarnation of what is the spirit of Advent. And so we should spend these four weeks, these four weeks that symbolize the 4,000 years from the time of Adam to the birth of our Lord. 4,000 years compressed into four weeks. We should spend those weeks of Advent with Our Lady. We should be trying to imitate her spirit in this time. Expecting in silence, in meditation, in humility, the coming of the Savior. So silence your soul in union with her. Put aside, even if it's only for this season of Advent, put aside your interior soapbox and silence your soul in union with hers to prepare the path that her son wishes to take in order to come to you. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.